Welcome to Birmingham General Cemetery, a Grade 2 star listed cemetery located in Birmingham's historic jewellery quarter. Known now as Key Hill, it was opened in 1836 by a group of non-conformist businessmen, that is those who are not members of the Anglican faith. It was Birmingham's first non-denominational cemetery, the object being to provide a burial ground which would be open to those of all religions and faiths or none. Key Hill holds a range of intriguing catacombs and a wealth of funerary monuments, on which are recorded many of Birmingham's famous and influential residents, with stories as diverse as that of Shakespearean actors, Victorian poets, industrialists, politicians, radical preachers, the first female journalist and the inventor of egg-free custard. Many of these residents were essential in the establishment of George Dawson's civic gospel, the ethos of which was an ambitiously inclusive culture where everything should be for everybody. This movement helped the people of Birmingham create a reputation as a trailblazing modern city. In partnership with the Everything to Everybody project, we would like to tell you more about these Victorian do-gooders. Born in Leicester in 1831, John Henry Chamberlain studied architecture under the guidance of Henry Goddard. On the completion of his articles, Chamberlain chose to further his education in London before moving to Birmingham at the age of 25. From 1864, Chamberlain went into what would go on to become a highly successful business partnership with William Martin, a specialist in planning and construction, and the pair became the preferred architect of civic leaders, including George Dawson and Joseph Chamberlain. No relation. Their buildings included a number of board schools, which were a clear expression of the civic gospel spirit. Chamberlain designed them to be the best-looking buildings in the area, with their medieval English style decorative ironwork and terracotta details. Oozel Street School, now the location of the Icon Gallery, is a fine example of his school designs. His close friendship with the Mayor of Birmingham, Joseph Chamberlain, would also be of benefit to his career. As part of Joseph's inner circle, John Henry Chamberlain designed a number of civic structures, including hospitals, libraries and public utilities in and around Birmingham that gave expression to the civic gospel philosophy, and in doing so he played an integral role to Birmingham's landscape in the late 19th century. His notable contributions include the Paradise Street extensions to the Birmingham and Midland Institute, the rebuilding of the Birmingham Central Library, which reopened in 1882, uh, demolished in 1974, and the Shakespeare Memorial Room, which was housed within the library and is today housed at the Library of Birmingham, and is the inspiration for the Everything to Everybody project. He also designed Highbury Hall in Moseley, which became the Birmingham residence of his friend Joseph Chamberlain. The Birmingham School of Art is generally considered to be Chamberlain's finest work and is the clearest form of expression of the civic gospel. It was commissioned in January 1882 and Chamberlain had completed plans shortly before his sudden death in October 1883. His devotion to John Ruskin can clearly be seen through his Gothic style and the use of detailed naturalistic elements. His designs were carried out by his partner, William Martin, and was completed two years after Chamberlain's death. As you can see from the images, Robert William Dale's headstone, which once stood behind that of his daughters in section K of Key Hill Cemetery, has broken over time and is now lost. Robert William Dale was born on 1st December 1829 in London. During his mid-teens, he became a school teacher in Andover, Hampshire, and there he joined the Congregational Church. He sought to attend a Congregational College, and it was this that first brought him to Birmingham. In 1853, he became an assistant to a nonconformist clergyman at the Cars Lane Chapel. Dale was a passionate orator and did not shirk from expounding arguments for change. He was a strong advocate of the disestablishment of the Church of England, arguing that any vestige of political authority impaired the spiritual work of the Christian Church. 
This belief extended to support of social improvement, and he was an advocate alongside George Dawson of the Civic Gospel. Dale took a particular interest in public education and held a seat on the Birmingham School Board. He believed that there was moral and religious work in the civic duty of improving public well-being in Birmingham, and he championed many important causes, including free public education, the recognition of trade unions, and the understanding of the links between poverty and crime. Despite his active role in municipal life, he did not preach politics. However, he was a Liberal Party supporter and worked with other Birmingham reformers, including Joseph Chamberlain. Dale's activism and sermons, many of which were committed to print, made him a national figure in Britain. In 1877, Dale travelled to the United States, where he delivered nine lectures on preaching at Yale, and in 1887 he travelled to Australia and toured there for 15 weeks, speaking of the many factors that he believed justified a buoyant faith in Australia's future. Dale remained a preacher at Cars Lane until his death, delivering his final sermon there a month before he died on 13th March 1895, at the age of 65. Dale is commemorated by a Birmingham Civic Society blue plaque on Cars Lane Church. Charles Vince was born in 1823 in Farnham, Surrey. In his childhood he attended a local school and became an apprentice to Mason and Jackson, the firm for which his father worked as a carpenter and builder. After a Baptist conversion, Vince entered Stepney College in 1848, which was run by particular Baptists in London's East End. On being inducted as a minister in 1852, he was assigned to Mount Zion Chapel in Graham Street, Birmingham. Vince first came to public notice as a supporter of Birmingham Civic Gospel in 1866 when he delivered a speech at the Mayor's Luncheon. During this speech, Vince expressed a desire in line with the aspirations of individuals such as George Dawson or Robert Dale for a new standard of business-like and idealistic municipal leaders. Vince was a strong advocate of public education and he was a member of a number of bodies that supported this. He sat on the Free Libraries Committee was a founding member of the Birmingham Education Society in 1867 and a founding executive committee member of the National Education League in 1869. He was a particular staunch supporter of secular education. According to the Birmingham Daily Post, Vince was well known as an elegant, persuasive and most earnest preacher. Robert Dell's son wrote that Vince was a man of genial humour who always fought smiling. Such description indicate why Vince was so well respected throughout the country, and why he was not only an accomplished religious preacher, but a political speaker too. Although his vocation denied him a seat on the town council, he spoke publicly in support of Liberal Party members, including George Dawson and Joseph Chamberlain. Even by the standards of the time, Vince's death in his early fifties in 1874 was premature and shocked his Liberal associates. His character and work were praised by a plethora of public figures and in a range of publications. His funeral was attended by thousands of mourners who lined the streets and, as one, removed their hats out of respect. His funeral address had to be led by two ministers consecutively at two separate chapels to cope with the numbers, with his main address given by Mr Robert William Dale, the pastor of Carl's Lane Chapel. Vince is buried here, in section K of Key Hill, alongside members of his family. Joseph Tangi was one of nine children, born to a Quaker family in 1826 in Illigon, Cornwall. Tangier was a mechanical expert, and in 1850, along with his brother James, he went to work under Isambard Kingdom Brunel at the engineering firm William Brunton Jr., who were the engineers for West Cornwall Railway. In 1852, Tangier and his brother James followed brothers George and Richard to Birmingham, where Richard had started work as a clerk for a tool manufacturer, with George joining him as a junior clerk. In 1856, James started a machine tool manufacturer and was 
quickly joined by his brothers Joseph, Richard and George. They set up Cornwall Works in Smethwick and were manufacturers of hydraulic appliances. The brothers manufactured machinery which helped to drive the Industrial Revolution by inventing new and more powerful hydraulic rams that require fewer men to operate and could lift larger loads. When Brunel needed help to launch his ship, the SS Great Eastern, which was at the time the largest ship ever built, he turned to the Tangier brothers, as their earlier work on the West Cornwall Railway had impressed him. The success of the rams helped the prosperity of the business with the brothers using the advertising line, We launched the Great Eastern. The Great Eastern launched us. In 1865, Tangier patented improvements to his hydraulic pulling jacks, which enabled one man to lift 60 tonnes. This revolutionised the industry, as the best jack at the time needed four men to lift a third of the weight. The firm moved to larger premises and employed over a thousand people. The brothers ensured the best treatment of their workforce, offering every employee free medical assistance, and before the NHS was founded, and free adult education classes. The Tangier firm went on to secure the creation of Birmingham Museum and Art Gallery by donating a total of £10,000 to Birmingham Council for the provision of a permanent art gallery and for the purchase of specimens of art for exhibition. The Tangier brothers also donated £12,000 to the Birmingham School of Art. Joseph Tangier died on 27th May 1902 in Bewdley. His grave, located here in Section K of the cemetery, is made from Cornwall granite, which shows his connection with his roots in Cornwall. Robert Martineau was born in Norwich in 1798 and was one of eight children. He left Norwich at the age of 20 and after a brief stay in London moved to Dudley where he joined the nail-making business of his future wife's uncle. Martineau settled in Birmingham in 1828, where he set up a business as a brasscock manufacturer, a successful business which was still operating into the early 20th century. Why Robert moved to Birmingham is not known, but freedom of religious expression may have been a factor. Birmingham at the time was not an incorporated borough and therefore didn't have to abide by the Five Mile Act, which allowed both Unitarians and Nonconformists to worship there freely. In 1831, Martineau took up a role of street commissioner, a position which, due to Birmingham's non-corporation, meant that street commissioners and justices were effectively the city's government. In 1838, the idea to set up Edgbaston Proprietary School in Hagley Road was made during a dinner at Martineau's house. The school was proposed to provide education for non-conformists, who at the time were not admitted to King Edward's. In 1860, after King Edwards rescinded the exclusion of nonconformists, Edgbaston Proprietary School became King Edwards' Five Ways. Martineau, having previously been a street commissioner, was elected Alderman of Birmingham after it became an incorporated borough in 1838, and later became Lord Mayor of Birmingham, serving in 1846 and 1847. When he became almost blind in 1854, Robert relied on his eldest daughter, Susan, to read him papers for meetings, to guide him and to nurse him. Martineau was eventually forced to retire from the council in 1858. Robert Martineau died on 17th June 1870 in Edgebaston and is buried in this family grave alongside five other members of his family. The family headstone is broken and a section of it, including some of the inscription for Robert Martineau, is missing. An obituary states... In the town council, his career was marked by devotion to its truest interests, by great unselfish sacrifices of time and care, and he was amongst the earliest and most honoured of our mayors. Robert Martineau's sister, Elizabeth, seen here at the top of the family headstone, is the five times great-grandmother of Her Royal Highness Catherine, the Duchess of Cambridge. I hope you have enjoyed this brief insight into the people buried here in Key Hill Cemetery. If you'd like to learn more about the people buried within Key Hill or Warstone Lane cemeteries, or if you want to find out more about the Everything to Everybody project, 
you can go to links in this video's description. If you'd like to help us to continue with our work, you can donate to the Jewellery Quarter Research Trust's GoFundMe page. The link is in the description, and all the proceeds will go towards the production of more virtual tours.